Good morning. Welcome to our service of morning prayer. Today is Wednesday, April 3rd, the Wednesday of Easter week. Our service of morning prayer begins with our opening sentence on page 77 in the Book of Common Prayer. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. On page 79. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Turning to page 83, together let us read the Christ, our Passover, the Pascha Nostrum. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he gives, he gives to God. So also consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah! Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Our appointed psalms for the day are Psalm 97, on page 726 and Psalm 99 on page 728. Again, we will begin with Psalm 97 on page 726. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. 
He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of the cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter, verses 40 through 51. The time that the Israelites had lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of the 430 years, on that very day, all companies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. That was for the Lord a night of vigil to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That same night is a vigil to be kept for the Lord by all the Israelites throughout their generations. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance for the Passover. No foreigner shall eat of it, but any slave who has been purchased may eat of it after he has been circumcised. No bound or hired servant may eat of it. It shall be eaten in one house. You shall not take any of the animal outside the house. You shall not break any of its bones. The whole congregation of Israel shall celebrate it. If an alien who resides with you wants to celebrate the Passover to the Lord, all his males shall be circumcised. Then he may draw near to celebrate it. He shall be regarded as a native of the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. There shall be one law for the native and for the alien who resides among you. All the Israelites did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. That very day the Lord brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt, company by company. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us together pray by reading Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah which begins on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land. Deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or by night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, 
the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second les our gospel reading is from the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 16. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers, Go to Galilee. There they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jews to this day. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, y'all, here we are. We made it to Easter. What a beautiful handful of celebrations we had here at Holy Comforter. The great vigil of Easter, our Easter sunrise service, our brunch, and then our Holy Eucharist after. Hallelujah! Doesn't it feel great to be able to say that? Hallelujah, the Lord is risen. Now, the resurrection accounts that we have across the four Gospels, they have similarities and differences. They're similar in a few things. In each case, they happen on a Sunday morning. And so that is from Good Friday, the crucifixion, forward two days. That's where we land on that Sunday morning. Mary Magdalene is present in each one at the tomb. And the tomb, thanks be to God, glory be to Jesus Christ, the risen one. The tomb is always empty across each of the narratives, of course. But there are differences. In the synoptic gospels, which we've talked about why they're synoptic, the women arrive at the tomb early in the morning. So each one of those three, it's either um, just at dawn or after the sun has risen, but in the Gospel of John, it's still dark. There's a difference in the number and um, the accounting of which of the women were present, with the exception of Mary Magdalene, like I said. In Matthew's account, there are only two women. It is um, what we hear in that one, it is Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. 
Mark, in his account, names three. Luke also names three, but adds that others had accompanied them to the tomb. And then in the Gospel of John, he names simply Mary Magdalene. And then finally, there is a little bit of difference concerning the placement of the stone at the doorway. In three of the Gospels, the stone had already been rolled away prior to the approach of the women. As we heard this morning in the Gospel of Matthew, there was an, it, it was the exception. There was an earthquake that took place, and then an angel descends and rolls the stone away and sits upon it. And clearly, it is impossible to harmonize these details to everyone's satisfaction. And so there, as we talk about in these commentaries on Wednesday mornings, um, you know, it, it really isn't um, necessary. No one, <laughs> the Bible was never intended to be a history book, nor did anybody have a video camera. But what is most satisfying in this tradition is that it is that very thing, that variance, that everyone had their... Um, you know, interpretation of the events as they transpired in their heart. They had their local church context um, based on how this retelling developed over the years. And then while, as we know in biblical scholarship, while Matthew and Luke depended on that gospel of Mark um, for the writing of their gospels in general, they arrived at their Eastern narrative using the stories that they had passed down from their local communities. Now, one of the things that's really amazing and strikes that passion in our heart for the stories of the early church and our Lord and Savior is that this um, Matthew's account is the most dramatic. So Mary Magdalene feels compelled to go to the tomb. There's really no reason given for that. Here's an earthquake taking place as she is there, and an angel appears, and that rolling away from the tomb, uh, the stone from the tomb, and you have all of this dramatic, um, you know, miraculous, dramatic uh, uh, things happening, and then he just sits there, or angels, non-gendered, then the angel just sits there. And so when that, when that is happening, an angel appears, the earthquake is happening, the stone rolls away. You know, we've just had the story of Lazarus recently, and so as you hear the storytelling, we've heard it so many times, so, you know, spoiler alert, we know what's going to happen. But in the early retelling, you know, do they almost expect, like Lazarus does, that someone, something, Jesus is going to come out of that tomb, and then the message is given. And so... The resurrection has already taken place. He is not there. Um, the tomb had been sealed, remember? The tomb is empty. And so we don't really have a resurrection account here. We have a post-resurrection account. The transformation from the physical to the, the, the resurrection and the spiritual has already happened. Um, that God has... An act of God has taken place, and now you have these humans that had a little bit of, of trouble before he died, before he went to his passion, and he kept trying to explain. We've talked about this um, before Easter, about he kept trying to tell them what was coming and the end of the story, and now you have a messenger that is telling Mary and or these other women from the other accounts, what is happening, and they've got to go re relay this story to the other followers. So the angel commissions these women, this woman or these women, to go and tell. They are, they are the first ones to go and tell of his resurrection and let them know that they are going to see him in Galilee and this is not only important because he wants his disciples to know where he is going to be. So there's a very simple reason for this message is to let them know where the risen Christ is going to be and they'll be reunited. But it's also amazing in that Jesus has forgiven them of their failures. He calls them brothers. And remember, to a person, everybody that was in the upper room with him, 
to a person they had betrayed him and left him. And he now calls them brothers, and you know that that, obviously that love of Jesus is there, but that restoration of them as a community is coming, and they are going to be restored and trusted and once again represent him just in that little small message. They are going to be redeemed just like he does with us. And on some small part, um, on some small part and some large and amazing part, we're like the disciples. We are flawed people. We have fa <laughs> we fail him. I do daily. We fail him um, on those on the things that we want to do that our heart leads us to do. We fail him daily. We fail him as individuals. We fail him as a church. Um, you know, in the same way that they when they were tested and they fall short, we fall short, but Jesus continues for those that love him and believe in him, and we are his, and we are his children, um, and we follow him. He is going to call us brothers and sisters. He is going to continue to redeem us and trust us, and we are going to represent him and this is a beautiful story and such a small message that was given. Um, here is where I'm going to be. Go and get my brothers, sisters, children, and I'm going to meet them there. And that's exactly the message for us in Easter. We are redeemed. We are restored. We are entrusted. We are his. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah and hallelujah that we are at the season to do that again. Amen. Let us together join in the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will pray suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Our collect for the Wednesday and Easter week can be found on page 223. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
We're turning to page 100 for a collect for peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all the assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission. O oh God, you've made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you, bringing nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We were closed yesterday, and so we do not have any continuance prayers from our um, daily office yesterday morning. I do not yet see any prayers coming in off of our page. So at this time, we will continue to lift the prayer needs found in our weekly service bulletin. We pray, Lord, for our sick. Celeste, Elaine, Roger, David, Walter, May, Cynthia, Lee and Bonnie, Urban Rhonda, Chris, Russell and Marcy, Aaron, Charles and Kate, Judy, Russell, Maria, Sterling, Marcy, Chandler, Pat, and Anita, we also pray, Lord, for Melissa, We pray for all who have died, Lord, and we ask that light eternal shine upon them. We pray for Ann and for her family. We lift up those, Lord, who serve in the military and ask for intervention in their safety, especially Matthew and Hayden. We pray and celebrate those that are celebrating birthdays this week, Lord, and also anniversaries. We pray, Lord, for our national church, for the health of our presiding bishop, Michael, and our bishop assisting him, Mary Gray Reeves, for our slate of bishop candidates, that was announced yesterday. We pray for our Diocese of Florida, for our Standing and Steering Committees, and for our assisting bishops, Bishop Ben Hayes and Bishop Stokes. We pray for our local church, for our vestry, lay leaders, our clergy and staff, and for all of our upcoming events. We pray for Holy Comforter Episcopal School, for our students and teachers and staff and administration for their um, event today, their Easter Eucharist, Father. We pray for all the houses of faith here in Tallahassee and their clergy and staff and the church universal. Let us together join in the general thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. 
We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Prayer of St. Christostom. Mighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Y'all have a great day, spread the light, and be the church. <laughs>